Bouquet 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 Beaucoup Beaucoup Shallow depth of field Narrow depth of field Narrow depth of field, shallow depth of field, bokeh, bokeh. What is it and how can you get some of it in your life? Do you even want to get some of it in your life? Really quickly, all this means is the out of focus pixels that you can get in the background of your photos or what some people call a blurry background. Case in point, that poster behind me is looking pretty blurry right now. Not anymore. That, in a nutshell, is what all the fuss is about. So a shallow depth of field is all the rage. Everybody wants that lovely blurry background, that out to focus background that makes these crazy abstract circular shapes that everybody calls bokeh. But why should you care? You might care if your background is really distracting and drawing your viewer's eye away from the thing that you want them to focus on. You might also want a shallow depth of field for artistic reasons. You may feel that the bokeh, which is all the abstract shapes created when you make a blurry out of focus background, is more impressive than having everything in focus. We've tackled the what, we've tackled the why, here's the how. The quickest way to do it on your smartphone is get your subject close to the camera. Make sure you get your background as far back as possible. That will instantly give you a shallower depth of field. But because your phone sensor is really tiny, you still will kind of be able to make out what's happening in the background and that means you won't be able to get that big camera creamy bokeh. But if your heart is set on getting that large format camera blur, don't be disheartened. There's a bunch of grapes, I mean apps, that you can buy that will allow you to paint out all the bits that you don't want to be in focus and make it look more like real bokeh. It does take time to make it look perfect and get it looking realistic, but if you've got the time, you might find it therapeutic. Caution! If you do decide to get some lovely depth of field by moving in closer to your subject, say for example you're shooting a portrait, moving in closer to the camera tends to widen people's features out. Secondly, make sure you do not blur things out that are on the same plane. So it would make no sense that you would blur out my face and this would be out of focus all of a sudden. The further things go back, the more blurry they get. Think about that and people won't be able to tell straight away that you've been fiddling with your photos.